name is Brian Opio. I'll be taking you through print media. What's next for print media? By show of hands, how many bought newspapers today? Yeah. How many bought newspapers today in the morning? <laughs> I'd like to show you a short clip on how millennials think of a newspaper. Mauko, are you a millennial? You are not. Oh. People just have way too much time on their hands, basically. Is there anything with puppies? It's like Craigslist, but written down. These aren't great drumsticks, but I can use them. Where are the misconnections? I'm in an EDM cover band. We mostly do Skrillex stuff with a little Diplo thrown in just to mix it up, you know? Are you sure there's no puppy section? Are you sure that the news always has a puppy section? Yeah. Sorry, this newspaper thing is like incredibly stupid. Like really, really, really dumb. Really hard without a drum machine, but you know. It's super brilliant. Oh, cartoons! No, oh, yeah, yeah, totally brilliant, but like still boring at the same time. Yeah. Guy, <laughs> chat. That was how millennials think about a newspaper. Well, with the smartphone adoption increasingly gaining momentum and the internet penetration in Kenya over the years coming of age and already becoming an all too essential part of the modern day Maslow hierarchy of needs, most of us have been forced to inadvertently stopping purchasing newspapers and some monthly magazines have suddenly gone digital. As you can see, this here presents the Maslow hierarchy of needs that was before the advancement of the internet. Now, Wi-Fi seems to be the basic need for every, any millennial out there. And uh, with this, and with this, it has, it has brought about the rise of the internet and decline of print media. Online content has become the source of news for many readers, especially younger ones like the millennials. And uh, in years past, consumers will have their morning papers delivered to their home or stopped by the newsstand on their way to work. But today, many people get their fix of news staring at a tablet or smartphone. In fact, it's rare these days to see a commuter reading a print newspaper or a commuter reading a news print newspaper in a Mantatu or stage. Consider these statistics. Readers of digital news like to get their content for free. As uh, compared to Mauko, who has just purchased a newspaper. Uh, but how much is it retailing now? <laughs> 60, 70. That's my fare for going home. <laughs> Each month, eight in 10 Americans read newspapers from digital media. Millennials are 39% more likely to read newspapers on a mobile device than other age groups. Half, half of those who consume content in a digital form during a month do so on mobile devices, only that, only that is not using desktop, laptop, computers. Um, a majority of Kenyans, young adults, 62% get news on social media, and 18% do so often. These are some of the closed publications in Kenya from Adam and uh, the Economic <coughs> Review. A long time ago, uh, newspapers used to get their revenues through advertisement and circulation revenue. While the digital, currently, people, the news, the digital print media get their income through advertisements, subscriptions, and endorsements. What these trends point to is that digital is the future for most newspapers and that these digital models will need to be supported with free content, a significant change from their print subscription model. Publishing executives know that, but many are still struggling to pivot to that all-essential digital future.
Uh, so how newspapers can adapt. In the course of covering local news and events, reporters and editors need to gain valuable consumer information about their readers. Many newspapers publishers have failed to exploit that information which should be used to segment their readership to help target advertising. Now their once virtual monopoly of content advertising delivery to household has been lost. In contrast, digital content providers have been able to acquire consumer preference through content delivery and related consumer response methods, enabling them to provide advertise, advertisers with alternative revenues, al alternative venues that are forcing the price of advertising lower, resulting in reduced revenue for newspapers. To be successful, newspapers will need to provide content that consumers will be willing to pay for as well as the related consumer information at a higher rate to those advertisers that their subscriber base desirable. So is there a future in print? Is there a future in print? Yes. There is. Tell us why. The, um, you know, seeing print uh, disappearing, but uh, we still have print. So probably if we travel around the world and we look at um, information centers in the world and uh, you find that, yes, we have got that shift where most of the print have been uh, turned to digital. But the question should be, why are they still keeping uh, print in also in those developed countries? Print media, if we look at the objective, what, does, uh, what is the objective of uh, that print media? It's to reach out to, to people. And uh, probably it's the, some of the libraries it's talking about Maybe they are going to turn uh, into museums in future, the same as uh, some of the churches in those other countries is mentioning have turned into museums. And, uh, they're just there for people to go and see. We once had these things with us. And uh, if the objective is to reach me, then I think print media is at risk. It's likely to get extinct in a way. In Kenya here, we are still not that advanced. I mean, just in the, in the urban areas, and the costs are still very high. I mean, Wi-Fi is not like everywhere. And uh, we still have people like, was this like me, of the 70s, 60s, who say, ah, no, 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 no. Paka, do you want to get a gazette? I mean, I bambo ya, usoma kwa internet, sijui, mtu waza kwekea tu, apada, apada. Paka, nuna kwenye gazette, kama ni notice, until I see the press, I believe it, it's true. So, print media, I think, will be here to stay. Because most people rely on, like if there's an import, like there's import notice on NTSA or government regulation, you know, to read it properly, photocopy it, show it to your staff, hotel, which, which from the print media, it's, it's, it's difficult. So I think these papers, will be around for some time, unless, until we reach the stage of US or whatever. But do you foresee a year or some 20 years down the line that print will be extinct? Yeah, hopefully as we advance in IT, maybe in the next 10, 15 years, then maybe I think we'll see. So there is a future for print to die? Yeah, in the short term, yes. I'm an instructor. And um, I actually teach on a digital platform. I, 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 do you know about Cisco? Yes, yes. I, I, I teach computer networking at KU. And um, it's a digital platform. It's, it's a digital platform. But because I was initially trained to instruct or to teach, okay, there are instances, there are topics that I have to produce uh, uh, hard copy documents, okay? And then the other thing I want to tell you also, my students, when they finish studying, they get certificates. We don't give them digital certificates. We print hard copy certificates, which we stamp, and then we give them. 
Okay? Our curriculum is online. Um, the certificates, are, I, 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 I request them from Cisco in California. They are sent. We print all the certificates and all the recommendation letters and we give to the students. Did I answer your question? But I use, I use PowerPoint for teaching. Okay? I still have my blackboard and whiteboard there for print media writing on that. I'll concur with him that um, it's not quite easy to read through the digital platform for a very long time. Even if maybe you've been sent some notes, you need to print them so that as you read, maybe you highlight the key points. But the main reason why I wanted uh, this time to talk, I want to come to the, the defense of my sister. When she said that in the near future, there might not be trees, she didn't literally mean that there'll be no trees. She is defending the use of printing all the time. But I think that is a campaign which is going on. Even when you get some cards or when you get an email, you are requested not to print it. That let us conserve nature. So my dear brother, it is not a sign of ignorance. The lady is just promoting and telling us to take care of nature. Thank you. When I was training up in Trukana, civilization and all this techie thing you are doing here is not yet up to them. Like when I went up to Trukana North, they were shocked seeing me. We are the same skin, skin color, we have the same hair, but seeing somebody dressed the way I was dressed, like in real clothing, they were still shocked. So yes, we might go into having digital certificates, but we, we will still need to have the printed certificate because not everybody is at par where you are at the moment. And that I need each one of us here to ac acknowledge that because not everybody knows what we know. Then on the question on is there a future in print, not even print media, yes, there is future in print because without the old way, ways we used to do things, digital, the digital era wouldn't have evolved. It wouldn't have been innovated. So it is up to us to ensure that we secure print, but maybe what we can do, we can just tweak print to suit our needs and the current market generation that we are in. So if we leave it up to some other people to do all this, then the future of print will disappear. But from my own perspective, and having gone to the deeper parts in Kenya, Trukana, Samburu, Moyale, print still exists. For them, the, I don't know, Facebook, Instagram does not exist for them. They do not know what that is. So we say print will die because we have what it takes. We have exposure. We have access to everything. For them, they don't. So again, guys. Print won't die, it's up to us. For me, what I can say, my opinion in self, because this debate will go on and on and on. I'm torn between two. Print will be there. But what print will do, they will work concurrently with, with digital print. Because if you look at, at the schools right now with the laptop, with the laptop and laptop distribution going on, and uh, books, books being published online, where in like Ikitabu, there is a platform called Ikitabu where a student can just purchase one chapter of a, let's say, primary mathematics book, just buy a chapter instead of buying the whole book. And also, if you look at uh, what she says, people in Turkana don't have access to internet. So where will these all hard copies that we have right now go to? It will have to go back to the people who aren't connected yet to the internet. For them to use at that time, as we progress in getting the infrastructure there. So for me, both, they will, they will run concurrently. Each will support the other. That's for me. And uh, this is just a a food for thought for you, for people out there. With the Bitcoin, 
and uh, cryptocurrency right now. Do you see a future where we will be printing money? And also with M-Pesa, where you can send you can send money just directly without not necessarily cashing out 3,000 shillings. This is just a food for thought for people, for, for you guys. Okay. I'll also talk about my company for a little while. My name is Brian Opio. I also run TechWheel Solutions. We are a digital marketing agency in Mombasa and also in Nairobi. What we do is we develop websites for companies that do not have a digital footprint also. And uh, we also print t-shirts like the one you see. And uh, there was another one I wore yesterday called National Second Society, if you saw it. Yeah. And uh, we also deal with point of sales management systems. Yeah, that's just about it. Oh, okay. Thank you. You can follow me on Twitter. My name is Brian. O My name is Opio2 at Opio2, and also on Instagram at Opio2. Uh, that concludes my session for now.